Swissborg is the official partner of my channel where you can buy, sell, hold, and more importantly, stake your cryptocurrencies. You can even earn yield on your stable coins. Sign up with my link and you'll earn up to $100 worth of their native token CHSB just for depositing 50 euros worth of crypto. Swissborg. Hello everybody, welcome back. Let's uh, let's take another view at the Dixie. So as, as of my video last night, yeah, you're all aware that I'm, I'm actually favouring a pullback on the Dixie now. So uh, a, a, a decent one and a prolonged one, which should take, you know, four, five, six weeks or so, uh, given some nice upside throughout maybe the latter part of this month into November and, and see where we go from there. Um, at the moment, we're, right, we're approaching the top area, which is the 114, which is part of this channel, which has been going on for many years. And uh, each time we've hit it, we've, we've We've had a rejection from it basically we have had a rejection from it and if we stay within the channel uh, then uh, then that's fine you know we can't ask for any more than that top of the channel seems like an obvious area i suppose it will be in hindsight if this works out the way i think it's going to do but the dixie on its own isn't particularly the chart to be traded and uh, and something that we have to look a little deeper into but if i was to look at this chart and say where is it going to come down to if i expect a, a decent rejection i'm not saying it's going to come all the way down to the bottom of the channel although that is possible it's possible uh, i'll be looking for the 50 exponentials to get retagged uh, and uh, and continue on and up uh, it all depends on the fed to, you know the fed are going to decide aren't they when this finally you know falls apart so that's all i'm looking for so let's have a look at the currencies let's go into that and why i think today for me i am scaling into a few longs you know for gold silver oil and uh, maybe i will treat myself to a bit of tesla uh, but crypto i'm still on the sidelines a little bit to be honest with you not prepared to, to jump into that quite yet uh, but traditional markets seem to be the ones who are going to respond as far as i'm concerned especially commodities because they want to go up they've been they've they've, they've wanted to go up for a while now so uh, they're the ones i'll be trading the most but uh, I, I i do fancy a little bit of maybe top cap nasdaq stuff but as far as crypto is concerned you know i've got a, a fair amount of cash waiting to be deployed in there but as far as the four-year market cycle is concerned they do often end in a capitulation dump so i'm a little skeptical of whether i should or shouldn't actually deploy capital at this very moment in time because crypto has been so weak um recently uh, and uh, and traditional markets have, and even forex has uh, outperformed them in the volatility for the most part so let's let's have a look at the uh, forex first so this is your pound um, pound to dollar we're in a, a rising wedge formation at the support right now so it gives me more uh, more belief that we're going to bounce from this level move back up to the 115 114 15 area and then break from there you know uh, this is a bullish more likely to break bullish than bearish in a formation like this and uh, you know even though we are at support right now and we, we only want to get super bullish if we break from the resistance we've tapped the resistance a couple of times come back down to the support if we get support from here we move back up to the top of the range and then hopefully break out as we reach the apex which is getting close to that 70 to 75 percent of the way through which is where you want to see a break take place same deal is really taking place on the euro as well we've got a symmetrical triangle we've also got a rising wedge um both of them yeah well, i suppose both the, the the rising wedge is a bullish formation just like the pound but the uh, the symmetrical is 50 50 now we're getting we are very close to the end of the apex now a little bit too uncomfortable to see a break either way on this but we are at support so let's take it on face value uh, this again with the pound if we both get support on this level and start to move up even if it is to the top of the range uh, should start to impact the dixie and this is the main one really to focus on the uh, to be honest with you this is the the japanese yen usd and we're looking at a blow off top taking place as far as i can see here uh, it's already surpassed the area of uh, of you know psychological resistance that one uh, 151 area now if we just go back in time we can have a look at this you know it's not that we can really correspond this to a great deal we've got the 150 over here more or less front run to an extent we've got the uh, the 150 60 over here with a dramatic um, pullback and we've got the support and a, and a bounce from this more or less area where we're at, at right now so i can't get my words out still feeling the effects of this bug that i've had uh, it's nasty stuff nasty stuff but if, whether we look at it on a monthly or a daily, we can see that, you know, we are massively, massively overheated on the money flow index. Anyone who sees a money flow index of this kind of significance needs to get their head tested if they're trying to go long on something like this. I know that the fundamentals uh, require you to go long, but the technicals on this suggest absolutely 
no chance. You should really, really honestly think about getting your head tested at this point. I know it's not, you know, crypto. This is a multi-trillion dollar um, a day industry here. Industry, if that's what you can call it. But it's true. There's a lot more money going involved in something like this than there is in something like Bitcoin. But a read is a read. You know, an indicator that I hold quite dear to my heart when it spots tops is flashing red after red after red after red. This is a blow off top. And all we need to see is this say, right, that's it. Shorts come back in now. Come on, this is getting out of hand. And uh, maybe coupled with a little bit of fundamentals just to uh, add a little sweetener to it. Uh, we're done for the day. And that's a monthly. So we could be looking at a very significant peak here uh, that actually consolidates for a prolonged period of time. And that's going to really help the Dixie uh, come back down again and you could make the case that this is what everybody's kind of been waiting for these sort of reads like that on currency pairs and again daily and monthly both flashing extreme reds especially the one on the monthly you know the higher term time frames getting reads like that on a money flow index is absolute craziness this madness that was basically a hundred so uh, so there's your there's your forex for you uh, and they're the main things that are going to comprise the uh, the reads on the dixie you're not really going to be expecting uh, anything else that's lesser than those three currencies there pound yen and and euro uh, to affect the dixie a great deal and but all of those three but affect mostly the the japanese yen uh, is is saying right that's it uh, I, if you want to, if you want to go long on this right now, that's fine. If you, you think we're going to go higher, that's fine. Uh, this is a parabolic move up right now. Uh, it's not likely to uh, to bode well. I think the biggest move is going to be down on this one now. And again, I'm not looking to short this. You can't short a parabolic uptrend. No way. But you can expect a, a, a pop at some point soon. Oil. Now we've got a falling wedge after a falling wedge. So we've got this one here, falling wedge, and we broke out from there, moved our way up to the top of the channel, 93. That's fine. That's exactly where we thought it was going to go. Uh, and now we're falling wedge again, a smaller one. We're looking at this on a four hourly time frame, broken out as well, and basically holding support on this descending trend now. So I'll be looking for this to break out back up to the 93 area, and this time round, break above there, move back up into the hundreds, and move up to the area 105. Again, we're going to need a bit of, uh, you know, yeah, a bit, of a, a bit of slack from the Dixie to do this. Uh, the Dixie, uh, I sh should have just say dollar strength really, is what's holding dollar uh, the, the oil and everything else down. There's no reason for oil to be sitting around at these lower levels with everything that's going on right now with oil. You know, the uh, the supply cuts, the geopolitical events, all this. There's no reason for it to be sitting down at these low levels, especially as we move into the winter months. So it's going to move up and it'll take any opportunity it's given from the Dixie to do that. And then it'll be a self-fulfilling prophecy. You know, once the snowball starts to roll, it'll just get bigger and bigger and bigger. And uh, 104 to 105 is my target. And again, scaling into some of these commodities is what I'm looking to do. Gold similar kind of idea but the main area of support is still below us uh, but only by a tiny tiny smidgen uh, by about two or three percent to the top of this box two and a two point two percent from the top of the box and the bottom of the box five percent so I'm prepared to start scaling into some longs around these levels um, you know that's the best way to uh, as far as I'm concerned to, uh, to to play this it's not the most volatile of, of assets really gold it's pretty slow uh, but I would like to think that I could scale into this all the way down into the box uh, for the hope that it actually does a reversal and then it's just basically goes on to a new all-time high over a prolonged period of time so it's a you know low leveraged longs five ten x's um, you know on the way down uh, did one today I'll be looking to enter into the box and you know all the way down to the bottom of the box uh, for what I think is going to be a turnaround on precious metals uh, led by Led by gold. And again, you know, this is going to have the inverse effect on Dixie as we start to see money go back into commodities. And I actually think there's going to go into some stocks also. So we'll just have a look at one of the main stocks of significance, which is Tesla. So we've got the pre-market open now is still down. And yesterday's earnings did not excite anybody as it was a bit of a shitty day. For, uh, for Tesla, but we're in a major massive box of significance here, uh, and this is for spot positions really more than anything else, uh, I wouldn't run, want to uh, start to get too clever with derivatives around these levels, as we've just entered the top of a box, because the box is about 15% from the top to the bottom I believe, yeah not too far off that, about 11%, so trying to get clever with uh, derivatives around these levels is, is risky, but if you do want to buy stocks, or if you do buy stocks like I do, I think scaling in 
into uh, into Tesla at this level is is actually okay. You know, if we're thinking about things on a on a on a, on a six to twelve month period uh, minimum, uh, and and beyond there as well. So I actually think that Tesla is, is reaching an area of of, uh, of buyers now uh, within this area. So it's uh, it's suffering a bit of a shock from from the earnings yesterday. Uh, no big deal. We're going to see that a lot a lot more. I would, I would expect from, uh, from as this is earnings season, uh, but I think we're going to catch a bid. Maybe not at this exact level, uh, but within this box is where the bid will come in. So as low as potentially 182 uh, to maybe even today being 204 maybe, uh, and and this is going to help the you know the the the, uh, the major indices and, and obviously have a negative effect on Dixie if we do start to see a reversal. So it all starts to feed together uh, as as one. Sort of sort of turnaround point. I'm not saying this is the end of the bear market. Heaven forbid. Certainly not saying that. I'm looking at this as the similar kind of idea as I had when I was talking about the everything bounce when we bounced around here. And again, I bought this level down here with Tesla before. Rode it all up. Lovely, lovely time. Looking for a similar kind of thing now, but based on a different environment. Uh, previously, I was saying that we're going to see a rotation out of commodities, which have peaked into stocks and indices which we got uh, and crypto would move through association with that this time it's really a matter of currency affecting dixie and i think that that's what's going to be the turning point and that's why i'm looking to go into commodities mostly because commodities are the ones that actually want to go up uh, some stocks yeah the, the, the big strong behemoth stocks and crypto, I'm still actually going to sit patiently on the sidelines uh, to see any kind of reaction. Because if this doesn't work, uh, if this fails for whatever reason, because obviously there's no guarantees in trading, if this doesn't go the way I think it's going to go, no big deal. I'm not at the uh, I'm not at the end of a crypto bear market where a capitulation feels quite likely, because uh, that's what it would be for crypto. You get a capitulation dump, and you get a huge 40, 50 percent dump on Bitcoin, wiping the floor with all the altcoins. Again, you know, looking very weak at the moment. So I'm not looking to get clever on crypto. Um, I think stocks and commodities probably offer less risk for a higher return at this point. And we'll see if the effects of this, if it starts to work, starts to pick up, pick up momentum, then we'll see the effects take place on, uh, on crypto. And then we can jump in on that uh, for what would be a decent, you know, spot traded scalp. Not looking for bottoms here, uh, not on anything, to be honest with you, but I am looking for a decent move up across, well, most things, let's face it, most things. But crypto is significantly weak, so I'm still happy to stay on the sidelines for crypto, but as far as a giant market is concerned, you know, the overall vibe of the market, uh, I feel as though this is, the, uh, this is what we've been waiting for now, an opportunity like this to see some kind of sustained move up for stocks and commodities is my, is my preference and obviously downside for the Dixie. So we'll see where it goes. It is Friday today, so let's not expect anything to take place today. Um, we're more going to be monitoring this next week as we've hit these areas of support for, um, for Forex anyway. And we're teasing the areas of support for things like gold and, and Tesla and things like that. So put it into perspective, I'm not calling the bottom, certainly not, absolutely not, so don't get me wrong there. I'm looking for a, uh, a giant swing, which could take place over a period of weeks to maybe even th throughout the most part of the rest of this year. But it's not started yet, you know, so by the time you've watched this video and you see things going down a little bit more and go, what are you talking about, man? I thought you said it was going to go up. I said, yeah, look, look, I'm looking at things on weeklies, mate. For the most part, I'm, talk I'm looking at things on weeklies. You know, we can, we can break this down on dailies and four hourlies. But really, it's all about the weekly for me. And uh, the Dixie is still moving up to the top of this trend. And I expect at some point before December, this 50 exponential is going to be tested. And again, it's not going to break down. Or if it did, that'd be great. But if it, it, I'm just looking for it to get tested. As a quick peck on the cheek for the 50 exponential at some point. Because that seems to be the most obvious place for it to go to. We see that in whichever direction we see to, uh, it, it going in. But on these dramatic uptrends, we ride the, uh, the 10 exponential. And we eventually consolidate to the 50. You know, we do this all the time. This is pretty standard stuff, really. Big rides up on the on the 10 big consolidation down to the 50 big rides up consolidation is down 
down to the 50. So it's, it's no different in a chart behavior to its, you know, the way it normally behaves. The only difference is, is that when you're re you know, reaching so high like this, everybody expects it to continue to go higher and higher and higher and higher and higher all the time because that's all they can see. But realistically, there's a lot of evidence to suggest that we're going to reach a temporary peak now and consolidate down to the 50. And that's going to help everything and everyone gain a little bit of green uh, and before we get picked up, probably on the 50, and move our way back up to the top of the channel and see where the hell we go from there. Anyway, I'll leave you with you there. Thank you for watching. Hope you have a nice day. Take it easy.